Hello everybody, welcome to another a new player investigator guide. Today we're going to be talking about Patrice Hathaway. These videos are made with two copies of the core set and, excuse me, her entire cycle in mind. So if you only have one copy of the core set, we recommend picking up another one or proxying the cards you don't have. In addition, um, we know a lot of people want us to get to the Innsmouth Investigators, and we will when we have um, their full cycle released. This is not saying that it's bad to play them right now. You play what you yeah. want, but we're not making a deck video until we get everything for them. So yeah, we, would, we would just be making the video with two core sets. Yeah. Like, do you really want that? I mean, I'll do it. I'll, I'll... like, whatever. Um, this is our last survivor uh, that we currently have to talk about until the next cycle is finished. So this is like my last time to be like, oh, I got to talk about Lucky. <laughs> um, but Patrice is very weird. Uh, and this deck is like everything in the kitchen sink because her deck size is what? How, how much is it? I don't even know. Like, it's a lot of cards for her deck it's size. 42. 42? That's a lot of cards. Um, she has really weird stats where she has four brain and then two of everything else's. She has seven meat and seven brain damage, which is, those are good numbers. Uh, her maximum hand number. size is reduced by three, so it's five. And then during the upkeep phase, instead of drawing one card, you discard all non-weakness cards in your hand and draw until you have five. Uh, for the future of this video, we're going to refer to this as wheeling, which comes from the card Wheel of Fortune and Magic, which is discard your hand and then draw up to seven. It's essentially just resetting your hand each turn. Her star effect, the Elder Sign effect, is plus one. After this test ends, you may shuffle all but one card from your discard pile into your deck. This will matter when we get to her personal weakness. Does anyone have any other thoughts on Patrice before I move on to her personal cards? No. Cool. Uh, so Patrice's Violin is a very handy dandy um, asset to have. So it allows you to choose and discard a card from your hand and exhaust Patrice's Violin to choose an investigator location to either gain one resource or draw a card. So this could be you or you could be playing some, some supportful helpful music for your colleagues as the Titanic literally sinks around you in the game. Um, Patrice's the... Violin is particularly important to her deck because um, inevitably when you're drawing five new cards every turn, you're going to have cards that don't do what you want this turn. Yeah. And she lets you turn, she lets you get some use out of those. Yeah. Because essentially with Patrice, when you look at your hand at the start of your turn and you're like, oh, I can't play this card. You just have to be like, all right, I'll see you later. It's a very weird play style where you're kind of like, um, <sighs> I don't know the, the term for it that I'm thinking in my head, but like so many other um, allow you to be kind of like reactive to things that is happening. But with Patrice, you kind of have to be active. You got to always want to be looking at your cards when you're building your deck and being like, can I use this to help myself in a test or another person's test? So then cards that are normally good in other people um, aren't as great. Like even for example, when we get too lucky, Lucky in itself is not as strong as Patrice that it is for other um, survivor investigators because you only have one window to use it on. And if you have Lucky in your hand and then you draw an enemy, for example, or like a, um, a treachery that doesn't do things, you're now like, unless you're doing tests, that Lucky is going to be gone at the end of your turn. Um, yeah, I think what Justin's trying to get at here is that like, other investigators, you draw a card that's situationally good, and you can sit and look at it, and you can wait until that situation comes up. Whereas Patrice really has to live in, and play in the moment, where you, you don't get to plan ahead. You look at your cards, and you ask yourself, what can I do with these? Or if there's something that has to happen, how can I make that happen with what I have available? Yeah. Um, I guess an even better example of Lucky is Ward of Protection, which if you have, and you have the resource and the sanity, you might as well just fire it off on your treachery card, because... Yeah, you throw it at anything. Yeah, it's going to be gone. Yeah. Uh, her weakness is really unique and really cool. So it goes into her hand secretly, but they'll find out pretty soon that it's in there just by the nature of wheeling every turn. So you may fight or evade Watcher from another dimension if it's in your hand. And if you succeed, you discard it. And if you fail, you spawn it engaged with you, which uh, you can has, another player can help you with. 
Uh, when your deck runs out of cards, and if the Watcher is in your hand, it attacks you for three meat damage. So this is kind of like a, it's, it makes it sound you are only drawing four cards a turn, which does actually matter, especially because as Travis was saying, um, that you want to be able to be acting and the less uh, actions you have to act with or cards you have to act with, the worse you're going to do with that. So dealing with the monster, mon the watcher is very, you want to do it obviously before your deck runs out number one. And then as soon as you can feel confident, like for example, maybe you're, Lucky could help you with it, or other cards, uh, and getting rid of it and discarding it. And then you want to aim to hopefully, if luck is with you, or if you have other methods, to draw the Elder Sign shit, because then you can shuffle every card but the Watcher back into your deck. Um, let's move on to the deck itself, and we have a lot. A few things are going to just be like, this card is here to just be for a test, like for the skills on it. Uh, because you need 42 cards, and that's a lot for just two core sets and a cycle. I mean, skills in particular are strong for Patrice, but yes. I'll to only get to them. Uh, Flashlight uh, lets you investigate at minus two. It's also pretty cheap to play, and it makes it so that she essentially has, like, four when she investigates for something like that. Uh, especially solid. good for low-cost... Um, uh, low shroud locations, mm -hmm. especially if they have to. Mm -hmm. It turns it into zero shroud, and then you just automatically seed unless you draw the auto fail. Uh, shriveling is very helpful to get out because it allows you to actually attack with Patrice, which would let you attack the Watcher from another dimension. Holy Rosary uh, gives you more brain damage, but also makes it so that your brain is better for attacking with your shriveling. So, like, that's your method of attacking with Patrice. If you want to do that, it's with your shriveling spell. Uh, look what I found is a red card that gives you clues if you fail a test, which with your two book, it's kind of so like they, it's your stats suck with Patrice. Like they suck. There are ways from this cycle to make them better, which we will get to. But as printed, like with just this, as it starts out, it's going to be kind of a rough time unless you're committing the cards from your hand to help you. Luckily, though, by design, that's what's going to happen. And you're probably going to fail, so you're probably, hopefully, going to only fail by two or less. But honestly, if you're uh, investigating a three shadow location, your look what I found could end up just being a dead card. So you want to make sure you're using it at a location that has, like, for example, two shroud. Yeah. Uh, yeah you, can, you, can, you can also investigate higher shroud locations if you also happen to have a lucky in your hand that turn. Yeah. You can use the lucky to get plus two, still fail, but fail in that sweet spot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember when I asked that question, I was like, so can I uh, use Lucky and then do this? And we were like, we can! Um, Drawn to the Flame, this one's sweet. Uh, this is, it's an easy thing to do. Uh, you'll get the clues. This is like the example of the card that when you have, you just want to fire it off and just be like, let's go. Uh, emergency Cash, if you need resources. Uh, this one, uh, also like if you're good on resources, is a great thing to discard because you can't commit it with your violin to give someone else a card or a resource in exchange. Uh, as I was saying, Lucky and Ward of Protection, always good cards, but they are less good in Patrice because you can't sit on them for the perfect moment. You just need to fire them off when the opportunity comes, otherwise they will be wasted. Uh, here we go. Now we're getting into some of the meat and potatoes. I, it's a little bit, I can understand if you're watching this and being like, did Justin really just get excited about the four neutral cards that commit for skill, each individual skill? For Patrice, yes. Because they always will do something because people are going to make these tests. And if someone, for example, is not doing a foot test, it's really easy to just get rid of it and turn it into a card with your violin. Guts especially is good here. I mean, Guts is always good here, but as like Patrice's one big stat. Uh, and also just the fact that, as we always say, uh, the game is gonna fight you through the Mythos deck and using Guts, uh, sorry, it fights you most commonly with Brain and Guts gives you more Brain and then also replaces itself if your skill test is successful with the two Brain it hopefully is. And it's just such a good, powerful card because you can also use it on other people. Um, the other three, Still also good because they'll put her stats to four, which is uh, at a level where they will be 
there's a chance anyway. It's like nice and comfortable. Yeah. Not, not for so sure, you're but you're like, and there's a chance. Yeah, there's a chance. Uh, and then, of course, unexpected courage, which is like guts, but it can help someone else. It can do other things, and it doesn't draw a card and replace itself. These skills are particularly good in Patrice because she sees five new cards every turn. And you want to get the most out of those whenever you can. But you're not going to have, you're realistically just not going to have the resources to play five cards that cost <laughs> resources or that, like, cost actions to play, right? Yep. It's a lot better, a lot more economical to be able to just, like, commit, have skills that are more flexible in that they, what they allow you to do or being able to help your teammates as well. I think with just this deck as printed, you kind of want to be the support player for the team. And then eventually, if you can't defeat your own Watcher from another dimension, uh, fail an attack or evade against it while your goon is in your location. And then say, help me, please. I've helped you so much. And then you commit the overpower from your hand to their test. And they just kill the Watcher and everything's gravy. Uh, let's get <laughs> on to the cycle uh, cards from her cycle, which... Uh, have are kind of designed for her as well. So we got Moonstone, uh, which gives you plus one brain and plus one foot, and you cannot commit play or commit Moonstone from your hand, but after you discard it from your hand, you may play it paying its cost. So just at the end of your turn, you may play Moonstone for three when it is discarded from your hand due to her um, uh, card text. Nice. Uh, then we got, a, uh, which it also is good because uh, it does take the Holy Rosary slot, but if you're not worried about your uh, brain, having Moonstone there is also fine because it gives you the brain and also the foot. And when I said not worried about your brain, I meant your sanity, your horror. Uh, a Glimmer of Hope. Did someone say something? I saw levels go up. No? Okay. Uh, a Glimmer of Hope. Uh, is can only be played from your discard pile, and you. Uh, it also has Myriad, which is really helpful for this deck because it takes up three card slots. <laughs> so um, that's good because the more Myriad cards you have, the less junk you're going to have to put in. Could you imagine like having to settle to put Knife in this deck? Not great with Patrice, probably. I don't know. Yeah. Bryn might say otherwise. He he always uh, tries to get I, us to stab monsters you, with knives. You, you would get to fight a four one time. <laughs> Yeah, it's oh man, what a what a great investment. So uh, Glimmer of Hope can only be played from your discard pile, uh, and it adds all copies of Glimmer of Hope in your discard pile to your hand. So for one resource, you can get three wild symbols. That's pretty nice, and they're going to be there anyway. So like during the game, they're perfect cards to be proactive with because they um, they commit for a wild symbol, so they can go to any yeah. test, and then you get them back later. Yeah, if you can't yeah, find a test to commit them to, then uh, you know nobody's trying to do anything. So yeah, exactly. You might yeah, have more like, problems. Glimmer of Hope's not something you want to be like doing. Every, you don't want your game plan to be picking up all your Glimmer of Hopes every turn. No. <laughs> but like they're nice when you have one test that you need to do good, or like you just want to bump up your teammates' skills a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe maybe you've wheeled your hand away, and the cards you found are all kind of dead this turn. Glimmer of Hope is a pretty solid backup plan where you just pick up one or two of them and you're like hey it's like i've got an unexpected courage mm -hmm. uh we have fortuitous discovery which is uh, another mirrored card so there's three copies in your deck it's cost is x where x is the number of it in your discard pile you might be noticing a theme going on with these cards here uh and you get to investigate and you get plus x book where x uh and and if you succeed you discover x additional clues so you can get the third one will give you it'll cost two it'll give you plus two and you'll discover two additional clues, which all reads nice on paper, and especially with Perception, being able to do it six is pretty comfortable for getting clues on a location. The first copy feels awful, though. Use that for your violin. Just <laughs> trust me on that. The first copy, just you're like, I'll investigate it too and get zero additional clues. Even the second copy is not great. It's just, no. Uh, Open Gate's a fun one, another myriad card. It's fast as well, so it doesn't cost you an action to play, and you can just plop it down a location, and uh, people can move from gate to gate as if the locations were connected, which is pretty sweet. Note that monsters cannot, only investigators can. Monsters don't know where the door handle is. 
Yeah, they can't. They can't figure it out. They don't know how doors work. Yeah. Also, the locations aren't actually connected. They're just treated as connected for movement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Read the signs is an awesome card for getting um, uh, clues off your location with Patrice. So you're going to investigate at six for two resources, and you discover an additional clue. And you're going to ignore any effect or keyword that triggers when you investigate. This is like chef's kiss for Patrice. Uh, same yeah, with also Spectral... Yeah, Science is just like so good for most investigators that can play it. Yeah. Uh, also same with Spectral Razor. Like that's going to do some good work in this deck. Uh, there will be times when you just can't play them and they're discarded. But honestly, that's Patrice. And that's just music in general. By the way, does anyone know why from Flavor why she does this? Oh, because uh, she's a musician and therefore improvises a lot. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I think that more from a jazz musician, not from like a concert violinist. Yeah, maybe, maybe she's a jazz violinist. Oh. That's a thing, right? <laughs> maybe. It could be true. I don't know. Yeah, it's really weird that she plays in 5-4, but... <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, last but not least, from the core uh, for uh, this deck, we have Scrounger Supplies, which is just an awesome uh, red card. Uh, uh, it provides any level zero card, so that could be, for example, a guts. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Now let's get to the upgrades. So the upgrades are kind of limited, but there is some stuff here. So Will to Survive is a very fast, but a very um, strong card uh you're gonna want to have a plan for when you do this though you don't just want to if you do put this in your deck you don't want to just fire this off uh unless you can do something with it because it's your turn and your stats are bad so this is like for example if you have a shriveling and you're ready to kill a monster this is the time to do it or you can play, you have six resources and you can play Will to Survive and like Spectral Razor or Read the Signs to get what you need from it. But otherwise... Even, uh, even like Fire Will to Survive, play second Fortuitous Discovery, third Fortuitous Discovery. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot of value there. That is, yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, you could. Uh, you can also use the Will to Survive to deal with your Watcher from another dimension. Because yes. assuming that you've got any other cards in your deck, really, you should be able to find a way to get rid of him. Mm -hmm. yeah will survive strong card once again though patrice is kind of like she's a weird one she's weird she falls into like not as much as like the preston or calvin club but still a little bit strange luckily mm -hmm. from her cycle her cards are sweet uh expeditious retreat sharp vision and brute force all follow a very similar thing where they are a basic evade fight or investigate action and you add three of the skills, so it turns all of those stats into five, and it basically just does more if you succeed on them. Sharp Vision and Brute Force will be especially good, but uh, Expeditious Retreat are also is also very nice here. And they're also yeah. cheap as well, so they can get in your deck pretty dang quick. Um, Travis has the rule that if you are on the art of the card, it is probably <laughs> yeah. good for you. And yeah, ironically, like nothing left to lose is like not great in Patrice, I don't think. <laughs> you know, it's I would agree. Uh, it's more the resource size is good. Yeah. Like if you want the yeah. five resources, the card isn't going to really matter with Patrice because like it can be really good if you're really like if you're putting two copies of Expedious Retreats, Sharp Vision and Brute Force in your deck and you're like you're going to be able to play those cards this turn. Mm hmm. But even even if you're playing multiplayer and you play last, you can yeah, like have somebody else run their turn at at your location, fire all your skills at their tests, and then play nothing left to lose. It is mostly just like kind of like extra copies of emergency cash. Yeah, and, and honestly, I I do think but, that um, with Patrice and with the card pool you have here and with the way this deck is built, nothing left to lose is good for your deck uh to basically just be five resources like even if yeah. you get five resources and like two cards that's still great right yeah even even if you get five resources and zero cards that's still probably worth three xp and a zero costed card from your yeah because you're in red yeah. you're in red you don't have yeah. things to spend your experience on right so 
Uh, plus, this deck does play a lot more cards that cost money to play than... Well, it plays a lot more cards than most of the decks we've done. But, <laughs> but it, it does. does. Like, uh, like Shrimp you, you get to see so many cards. Yeah. You want to mm -hmm. play them all. They all like many of them cost money. Extra cards to get you money can be could be very strong here. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing left to lose is also one of those cards that you could probably be comfortable running as a one of when you upgrade because you do see so many of your cards and you don't want to draw two nothing left to loses in one turn because then you have literally nothing to lose because you already <laughs> have gained it. Uh, now there is some more fun stuff. So Nightmare Bobble is pretty sweet. Uh, it's, the downside of it is super minor, and it allows you to basically just, uh, say no to three auto fails. Only when you reveal them, though, so you can't help Brin out. But, no. uh, the card is very powerful, and when you don't have a lot of options to upgrade, that's pretty sweet. Uh, Summoned Hound is cute. Uh, if you like dogs, which a lot of people do, uh, however, like most dogs, they get mad and then they attack you, which they get unfortunately upset when you don't feed them for a week. <laughs> that doesn't yeah. make sense. Um, but unfortunately, with Patrice, you're gonna see cards in your deck more, so you'll pro it'll probably get mad at you sooner rather than later. Just something to be aware of if you do want Summoned Hound. It does Summon help Hound out does her do. book and like her book and her fight though yeah. quite a bit when it is active. Um, it does do a pretty reasonable job of solving the watcher as well, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the cats, however, are, are pretty sweet for Patrice. They can be a little bit clunky, and uh, unlike me, make sure you play them right because in the first two games I played them, I played <laughs> them hella wrong, and I super broke them. But. Um, they can be very strong, and they're also great for um, dealing with the Watcher from another dimension. Like, Hope and Zeal, just defeat it by discarding them. Um, and you can uh, grab more cats with it. It's like a whole thing. It's, it's what the cats do. They discard, they're in your discard pile, you can play them from it, yada, yada, yada. It's, uh, it's a good time. If you want to be really fun, just do the cats and dogs together, and like as that's the that's the deck that Travis has been slowly hinting he wants to see come to life, the cats and dog deck. I have. I notice it in all your write-ups. You're always like, if you like cats, you do this. If you like dogs, if you like both, and it's it's always a good time. Uh, okay. Mind's Eye is probably the best here for all investigators. Can we... Yeah, like, it makes your other stats pretty not trash sometimes. Yeah. Unless you use your brain instead of uh, your book, fist, or foot, which is... It's really, really nice when you're trying to get rid of that watcher. And also, um, like, at the also same time... Also, it's myriad, so... Hey. It's not going to run out, right? Like, because mm -hmm. you can just cycle through your deck so much, right? Yeah. It, like, it's a little bit awkward that it takes up both arcane slots because you can't really play shriveling with it, but it is very, very nice in that you can discard additional copies with your lightning bolt to get more charges on it. So again, that's going back to being able to play some of your cards or getting the most out of the five cards you draw every turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is where the knife really shines. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> um, I do think though that um, the, uh, Travis is right because it takes two slots unless you want to add a package where you get more arcane slots. The, the Patrice that uses Mind's Eye is less of like attacking with Shriveling and is more kind of like the Spectral Razor, read the signs, kind of there to just grab random stuff when she can build. It's like Mind's Eye is like the full support Patrice. Yeah, Mind's Eye also <laughs> plays very nicely with our guts and our unexpected courage. It does. It does. Yeah. Uh, the last upgrade yeah. we have from her cycle is Stargazing, which is the card that I've played a lot of. I don't think it's good, but I think it's fun. So it just basically, it, it allows someone to take a move, a draw, or a resource action, because what else do people do uh, uh, during the Mythos phase? Well, the important thing is it means you don't have to draw a bad card. Yeah. No, yeah. It, it, it does. It, like, that is the most important That's what part, it actually but, does. Like. <laughs> but it's... Um, it's fun. It's a fun card. I've always enjoyed playing it. It's just silly fun. Yeah, I'd recommend giving it a shot. It yeah. is a good time. 
Because then you can be like, so who wants an action? And then Travis puts up his hand and says, I guess I will. And then he draws a card and everyone's yeah. like, we've done it. We've done it. Anyway, that's yeah. Patrice. She's, I want to give her another shot. I don't think I played her well. Tra I like the build that Travis did as well. Once you get a full collection, being able to do the um, desperate Patrice. Um, but I think there is a lot of potential for her in the future as well. And I think her play style, once I crack it, I think will be really enjoyable for me. Yeah, she is a very unique investigator. I just hate her stat line, man. And you probably will too when you play it. Yeah, it's not that bad. Just get plus four every test. Put Justin just because she's not great with Dark Horse. Yeah, no. I, so, I mean, even then, I just... I, dude, get rid of those... I, ah. No, but it's fun. <laughs> she's fun. She's fun. Uh, thanks for watching. We might not have a investigator guide next Saturday uh, because we're going to be hopefully recording in person. So we might miss a week, but we might still be fine. So if we do miss a week, you know why that's happening. Uh, otherwise, we will finish through the last seven we have. And then who knows what's going to happen. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. And as always, GG's.